Welcome to Rock and Roll Fridays, a podcast on musical encounters Welcome and life. Rock and Roll Fridays. So happy to have a guest, George Flair. Flair, like player, right? So, uh, violin player. <laughs> yeah. So I was talking with George, and um, you know, I'm always interested on Rock and Roll Fridays to talk to people that play all these amazing instruments and a violin player is not someone I thought I would have on, but it's awesome. And George, talk a little bit about your background and kind of what got you into the violin. Cause that's, you know, usually people start with guitar, piano and all these traditional instruments, but how did you lead to uh, violin? You know, I, I get asked this a lot and I hear the same stories. I started violin when I was in third grade and I was, I, I did too. I just stuck with it. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I had a, I, I started playing in third grade and um, more or less as a joke, um, just to kind of get out of art class, I remember. And then um, I fell in love with it. I felt watching watching cartoons on Saturdays with my violin in my hand, listening to the theme songs. And I just I, I, I never fell out of love with it. That's amazing. That's awesome. And did you ever have the urge to kind of move over to guitar or other instruments or was it always the violin? I, I, it was stringed instruments, anything that I could pluck, play easily that, you know, it was, I liked. Awesome. And so what, talk about um, the Tim Williams band. So mm -hmm. is that, is that kind of one of your key groups that you're playing violin in? Yeah. Tim Williams band um, by Tim Williams. He's an amazing guitar player, an amazing man, character, everything. He's uh he has his own wedding band and I sit in, I do, the receptions, weddings, and cocktail hours and stuff like that with him. He's a quite accomplished the musician as well. Awesome. And do you get it? So I always ask people, do you get any solo action in these songs? And like, they let you go. I do. On? Yes, I do. I do. I, I do. Sometimes I get some, uh, some requests. When I play with Tim, I get to, you know, open up a little bit and jam out. Yeah. Awesome. And you've been a session musician as well. Yes. Yep. I have uh, I get hit up every I'm a, like a gun for hire as a musician. I'll play some tracks and you know if they want me to solo on something to rip it a little bit. What what type of bands are kind of bringing you in for session gigs? Like are they looking for a certain sound or are they looking just hey, we need a violin part to 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 kind of stretch this song and and add some yeah. different sound to it. A lot of the a uh, more what I find more is I do a lot of uh, folk style country music, things that are geared specifically for violin. What I love to do, I also play with electric uh, pedal board and uh, wah pedal, and I like to mess with the sounds. So I'm trying to open it up the idea of different sounds and techniques like that. So that's what I would love to get into. Yeah, and we were talking before, right? The the uh, the violin is like over the years is not known as an instrument of rock and roll, but like, you know, the Dave Matthews band, yeah. um, you know, like seeing him perform mm -hmm. live, like it, you forget that he's playing a violin and not like a traditional electric guitar. Right. I mean, Oh man, see, it was inspirational to see somebody who was standing next to a guitar player, just crushing it on a violin. And then all the different avenues you can go down there. John Luke Ponte was the same way. I started classically trained with Zach Perlman, who was a phenomenal classic uh, musician. Um, and then Boyd Tinsley, John Luke Ponte, uh, Mark Woods, like all these electric guys. You just I want to continue pushing that forward. It's amazing. Yeah, I, I was going to ask you about your background because, um, you know, again, it's like, you know, certain instruments have a connotation, right? It's like, you know, electric yeah. guitar, um, you know, the more, you know, the stand up bass for jazz, right? The violin for classical. So you started as a traditional um, classical musician? Yeah, started with the Suzuki method, classically trained orchestras, uh, symphonies, stuff like this. And then um, I started playing with, you know, different instruments in the uh, orchestra who also like to rock out. And then I started playing rock music and the look on people's faces. Yeah. It was addicting, man. And I was like, I got to keep doing this. I got to keep pushing it. Yeah, it was, yeah, it's awesome. Well, and then like when I was in Nashville, I saw a couple bands that used the fiddle and the the violin 
in their country songs and the sound it's it's such a unique sound that like it's yeah. almost like when you hear it you know it's a violin or fiddle right and and especially in the country yeah. you mentioned like country music or rock music you know what now the the crossover in between of country music and rock and roll um but it's such a cool I don't know like all the songs in Nashville that we saw these bands where they were just killing it and the fiddle and the uh I, I I assume it was a fiddle. Actually, that's a great question. What is the difference between a fiddle and a yeah. violin? <laughs> Which probably most people dude, don't know, don't know, no, my, right? Dude, my brother, my brother, listen, I get to ask that question all the time. And for years, I was like, it's just the music we play. I was I was recently informed that the difference is a fiddle does not have a chin rest. A violin has a chin rest. A fiddle is played lower, like into your like rib cage. Got it. Which I thought Got was it. amazing. Yeah. I never and then, knew that. <laughs> and is that the only is that the only difference? <laughs> yeah. Well that and then plus the style of music the, for sure. The yeah, style. How was that? How was it? Yeah. What what are um are you, you know, we talked about some of the musicians. Are you seeing like the violin and the fiddle more in modern um it's yeah more modern rock and modern songwriting, like pulling in these maybe yeah. non, non-traditional yeah. instruments into recording sessions and things like that. Yeah, not, I see, I see a lot of, I do see a lot of violinists that are basically plugging their violin and making it electrical. I don't see, I don't see from in my, you know, small little world here. Um, I don't see a lot of like uh, pushing the envelope for sounds and like, uh, like a Pink Floyd kind of like a theoretical, you know, something like that. I don't see too much of that, which I'm pretty happy about because I'm kind of like swimming in the sea by myself right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, but um, I, there are some amazing violinists. I'm in the Philly area. Um, if I could name them, is that okay? Or Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like, like the whole... uh, Br- Br- Brian Fritzgerald is probably one of the best violinists, you know, if not in the, the you know, this area, if not in, you know, the East, East Coast. Uh, there's Alice Marie, she's a she's an acoustic uh, violinist. Um, and we all know each other. It's like a small little violin family. Yeah, it's awesome. But, yeah. And yeah, and, yeah. and what 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 is it like I always ask my guy, like, what is it about music, right? Like you kind of headed towards the violin. Oh man. Like, yeah, like because you know, people like you, I I'm always jealous. My brother has a band. I I, I this is as close, you know the people that don't get to play music, right? Or, you know, I never understand. I wish, yeah, I wish that I could, like, just, like, put my hand on your chest and, like, just, like, push this power, this feeling that I have for you to know what it is. Music is, like, it's always been this, this, this emotion, this passion, this feeling. It just, it's so, it feels amazing. I can play music. I can, I can, I may not be able to communicate well with you, but I can play instruments with you and there can be this dance, this magic that happens and you cannot, you, you can't replace it. You can't you describe it. It's amazing. It changes lives, man. Music yeah. changes lives. It's so inspirational. It's, yeah. it's inspirational. It's, it's, it saved my life personally. Um, like, and it just, it means so much to me that I wish people could enjoy that feeling. It's amazing. Yes. And that's that's so powerful like it changes lives because the thing about it is like it's also never ending right like there's music being created every yeah. day and like yeah the the young people of today are hearing different music and this maybe the same music that we grew up with and our grandparents grandparent right and with the power of the Absolutely. internet with the power of the internet now like you know pulling up a famous violinist is easy to do and it turns people on to more sound and more music which you know yep. back in the day trying to find certain uh genres or certain uh musicians was really difficult <laughs> it was really hard to yeah, do right yeah. and now with youtube and spotify yeah. you can google and find out you know i want to learn about the violin <laughs> It's like you can. It's like learn. You have the ability now, which I don't want to say that I I missed it because you know you kind of. I think it makes it more special growing up, 
with what you listen to and it transforming that. Now there's so much, like you said, there's so much music everywhere. Everybody has a little bit of music in them. It's just when you listen to whatever it is and you get that hair raising, tingling sensation, chase that because that means something, man. Yeah. You know, and it's everywhere, you know? Absolutely. So yeah, I'm like, goosebumps are ready, dude. I love yeah, it. <laughs> I, well, I, I, hey, this is, you know, Rock and Roll Fridays is all about the passion Hell of yeah. people the passion of people and also some musical run-ins. So you've been at this a while. Like, have you had any really interesting musical run-ins where you're like, man, how'd I get here? <laughs> yeah, I've had, I've had a really, uh, a couple of unique spots. I've met, um, I did a WMMR 93.3 out in Philadelphia. It's a, a really popular. And I was able to win uh, this uh, wild spot. So um, I went from working installations, construction to the next three weeks, I was playing at the Susquehanna Bank Center. And then I was playing at the TLA. So a lot of these venues that I met, I was able to meet a lot of interesting people. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's amazing. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's wild. Um, I got to I got to meet um Slash, which I think was probably the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. They've got that guy's just nothing but energy. Yeah, like he's a walking top hat with hair. It's a it, it was nuts. Um, and uh, some several other bands like um, I, I guess it escapes him right now. Godsmack, there's Godsmack, um, Slash, and a couple of the heavy, heavy other metal bands that um we were trying to do. Our band was called uh, the Endless March. And they put a CD out, a demo out for us. We had a one, um, a ten-song album produced by Forge Studio in uh, Glenside, Pennsylvania, by yeah. the man Ron D. Velcestro, uh, who's also in the Tim Williams band. And I've also learned it is a very small community here. Yeah. You will always run into these people again. Yeah. Well, meeting me. Sl- yeah. I mean, Slash is like walking into a rock star right i mean like literally the the epitome of a rock star right yeah it was opening the patio doors and the light came in and i was like oh i was like oh my god i know this dude <laughs> <laughs> yeah. this is nuts dude it, like it's cool it's inspiring as hell man yeah it's and also well hell. the fact that like like this is the power of music right you're in the same genre mm-hmm. you're in the same stage you're in the same gig with the upper echelon people, right? Like you, you know, I I always I've find been, I find it fascinating, right? When like pe- people open up for bands and it's like then those opening bands become the headliners, right? And it's like they open yeah. up for people and you know, yep. the the paying of dues, if you will. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I'm with um I just recently joined Matt Friedman. Uh Matt Friedman and I'm in the herd. Is Matt Friedman in the herd? He's a beautiful person. He's a good character. He's got great music. He writes his own singles. He's a uh, country music uh, star. I mean, awesome. The guy's awesome. got. The guy's gonna be going places, man. Awesome. And I do a lot of country music there too. He's all that, really good, dude. That's awesome. So George, where can people find your music? Where can people hear you and even the bands this you play super, in? Yeah, super super easy. George Flair music. It's John George Flair violin. I'm sorry, it's George Flair violin on Instagram. George Flair violin on Facebook. Um. Yeah, keep it simple. And I have all my shows on there in Philly in the tri-state area. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, please leave a comment, talk, call, whatever. I love talking music. This has been so awesome, man. This has made my Friday. That's awesome. That's uh, that's great. And George, it has been a pleasure. And I'm gonna get everyone to check out the violin now. Like you're you're gonna see some uptick of people checking out violin. <laughs> Yeah, I hope so, dude. I hope so. All right, George. Awesome. Have a great one. It's been a pleasure, man. Take care.